It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brain of Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Wagner College head fencing coach, Coach David Sierra. How are you doing today? I'm well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching and college fencing? So I was a club coach for quite a number of years and involved in the sport, both as a club coach, as a referee, and previously, of course, as an athlete. Um, NCAA fencing is kind of one of the peaks of our sport. It's one of the the um, the greatest opportunity to work with a lot of really great athletes and work in some really in really cool environments. Um, it's a challenge for me. Um, it's a challenge for anybody I think stepping into this role, and I really enjoy a challenge, and I really get the opportunity, really enjoy having, like I said, the opportunity to work with some really cool athletes and great athletes. What was that experience like for you going to Texas A and M and competing in fencing? So way back when, when I was a competitor, I started at Texas A&M. Um, that was when I was a collegiate athlete there. It was actually a club sport there. We weren't a varsity team. Um, and it was a great group of people that I really enjoyed being around. We had a very tight-knit group. Um, we would travel to, tur- travel to tournaments and meet together, obviously. Uh, but really, I made some lifelong friends in that in that community and still in contact with them today. So have some great friends that I you know see when I travel to different places or get together in zoom calls or connect on Facebook and share pictures of what our dogs and cats and children are doing and things of that nature. So really, like I said, really for there, for me, it was about the community and the opportunity to be around a great group of people in addition to the competition, of course, too. Of course, how did that help you in starting to coach in college fencing? Actually extensively. Um, one of the big things, so Wagner's a very new program in, in NCAA fencing. This was our eighth year for the women's team and the first year for a men's team. And a a big part of what I've been working on here since I took over the head coach position of the women's team and then started the men's team has been working on building our culture. And trying to develop a culture of mutual support, trying to work, develop a culture of accountability, trying to develop a culture where um, the kids and the, or sorry, the student athletes are working together towards a common, a, 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 excuse me, it's been a very long day, working together towards a common goal um, with a shared set of values, a shared set of responsibilities and what everybody wants to try and achieve. And I look back to my days as a collegiate fencer in that group that, really worked together well and was able to accomplish some really cool things and have continued to be in contact with each other for as sort of a model for what I want my college team to look like. Of course, what was your experience like getting to ref as a U.S. fencer? Um, so I've, I've refereed actually all sorts of levels in, in USA fencing, everything from baby beginners, it's their first tournament up to the Olympic trials. Um, I've even gone to referee in Canada um, at some of the international event up there. It's a great time. I love refereeing. Um, it, fencing is a, a bit of a unique sport in the sense that there's a lot of crossover uh, between coaches and refereeing. So a lot of high-level coaches and a lot of mid-level coaches have either worked as a referee in the past or are continue to do like, for example, um, this weekend, I'm headed down to referee at a, a USA fencing regional event in, in Washington, DC. The great thing about being a referee is you get front row seats to some of the best fencing in the world. That's, that's really what it comes down to. So. What was that experience like for you opening up your own fencing program called the cutting edge fencing center? Right. So back when I lived in Texas, um, I was a, a club coach and my club was cutting edge fencing. We really, um, again, it, it was a great time in my life. I I was, I had an opportunity to do something interesting. The, the, I hadn't really considered being a club owner and being 
my own boss in that regard. I'd kind of been bouncing around from club to club in in the Dallas area and working at a couple of different places and made some contacts and had some friends and, you know, was coaching some young athletes and sort of this opportunity arose at a program at a rec center that basically had lost their, their person that was teaching them. Um, and so I, you know, someone contacted me and said, Hey, David, are you interested in doing this and kind of being the person in charge over there? They want to grow the program into something bigger. And, and North Richmond Hills is a suburb of city of Fort Worth, a little community rec center there. And I was like, you know, I'm sure. I don't know if I'm necessarily ready for this challenge in my life being, being the guy in charge. Uh, but why not? So I did, I took the leap, went over there and grew it first at the rec center. And then we moved to another, uh, sorry, first location off, off site from there, then to a second location then to a third location. Um, each time expanding, getting bigger and bigger, great time, developed a lot of really great relationships, taught some amazing athletes, developed a number of NCAA fencers of my own kids who went off to go fence in, in NCAA, went to Ohio state and Notre Dame and air force Academy and Stevens tech and, quite a number of different places. Plus also I got to coach all different levels. So everything from again, little babies uh, up to um, veterans, which is the over 40 age group. And that was a, like, it was, like I said, it was, it was fantastic. It was wonderful. Unfortunately, COVID hit. And um, so as like many other small businesses, we were unable to continue with our current system. And so we had to close the club at that time in, uh, in 2020. 2021 is when we closed down. So, what was that feeling like coming to Wagner and starting the fencing program at Wagner? So, like I said, when I got here, the fencing program had been around for eight about six years. Um, it was a new, um, a new program. Um, and I was sort of, I'm sort of the first professional coach that they've hired here. They've had a series of graduate assistants, uh, basically to help get the program off the line. And again, it was a great opportunity. Um, just sort of popped up out of out of nowhere, someone said, Hey, they're looking for another coach. They're looking for a coach. And you know, you're in the area in New Jersey now, why don't you apply? And so I called the athletic director and I said, Hey, um, are you interested in taking this program kind of the next level? What do you, what do you feel about that? And he was like, well, you know, we kind of think we're ready for this. And I said, okay. Um, been doing a women's program for a while. I'd like to start a men's team when we, when I come along and he was, he, you know, thought about it for a little bit, talked to his superiors and they came back and said, okay, great. So that's what it is. It's been a lot of building, a lot of work, a lot of development. Um, like I said, working on developing culture, developing capacity, I had my first real recruiting class. This, my, my first recruiting class came in this year, uh, which was a fantastic group. It's a very young team. Um, we returned five people uh, from the women's team this year. And of course, obviously all of the men, are are here in their first year here we did get um a couple of uh transfer students so that helped even out a little bit on that regard but again it's been a challenge um and it's been an exciting challenge and it's been one i've really enjoyed uh meeting one i've really enjoyed getting to know a different type of athlete it's also expanded my horizons professionally because i have to i have to coach all three weapons here and I have some experience coaching foil and epe. My primary weapon was saber, but um, I've had to work now with high level athletes in all three weapons, uh, which has definitely been uh, a, a stretch and something I've been working on. Um, obviously, I've engaged in professional development of my own. I don't think you can call yourself if you're a coach if you're not willing to keep learning. So that's been the thing for me, uh, as well as just all the fun pieces of getting to develop a, a college program and, and turn it and have some, some, some exciting things. So all the travel, all of the, the pieces of going to meets and going to different parts of the country, trying to see what we can do as a team, what the individual results look like. And it all paid off this year. And we had our first qualifier to NCAAs championships from Wagner. Um, was one of our young men that came in, Flavio Vinci. Uh, he's actually Italian, um, and man, that was a great, that was an awesome experience. 
looking to build on that for next year. Um, the other thing that's also been exciting and great about building the team here is we have a very diverse team. And I mean that like in a really positive way. It, it's a team that is much greater than the sum of its parts um, because of its diversity. I've got kids from eight different countries on my team and from all over the world, from Russia, from from Denmark, from Czech Republic, Italy, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Germany, just number number of countries from Mexico, Spain, plus Americans, and then not just from around here, around Wagner, from all over the country, California and Texas and Chicago. So everybody kind of brings something new. Everybody kind of brings something unique and brings their own little piece to the team. And as a result, makes the team better. So we all get along for the most part. You know, it's 21 kids plus a coach and a, and a graduate assistant. So there's a lot of different personalities. Uh, there's a lot of different um, interactions that take place uh, and managing those and fostering those and watching the, uh, the student athletes kind of grow and develop over the course of the season has been a lot of fun and a lot of great rewards professionally and, and personally in that regard too. Of course, as a head coach, what has that experience been like having a women's program first before having the men's program and coming and building a men's program? Um, you know, it's, that, that's a question I get asked a lot, actually. <laughs> so, you know, one of the one of the big questions they say is, "Well, what what changed when you added the men's program?" Um, it, it's kind of hard to separate out what was the result of the men, what was the result of it being my recruiting class. What was the result of it being the second year of the program here? But all that together sort of combined to have a number of different effects. First of all, it was a larger team. So in one of the interesting things about fencing is that the men's teams and women's teams typically, for the most part, practice together, compete together. Um, it's a combined championship at the NCAA. So again, doubling the size of the team so that's a management issue right all the resources required for that now we're taking two buses two vans instead of one van so we had to have a driver for that and then making sure that's getting communicated so from the logistical aspect everything was doubled or, or i in some cases even tripled and quadrupled just because just because you add more people doesn't necessarily mean it doubles in capacity sometimes the complexities go up logarithmically um and then from a uh, from a perspective of of the growth of the team, again, adding additional members from additional backgrounds made things even stronger because we did bring in that that idea of diversity equals strength and bringing bringing student athletes from all over the world from many different perspectives, bringing everybody together. Um, there's definitely been more energy this year at practices. Uh, there's been some great accomplishments as a team, a lot of growth as a team. There have been times where it, it, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's, there's conflict on the team, but there's definitely been things we've needed to work out that just take more time to do with a larger squad as opposed to a smaller squad. So smaller squads, easier everybody in the room. We can have conversation and nine people and everybody kind of be hurt. 21 it's a little different you got to have a little more formal sometimes nature sometimes in your interactions um just sort of keeping everybody on the same page and, and and doing that but again great experience uh awesome way to develop this and and really looking forward to what the future holds here what are some of the different levels of college fencing and what is the biggest difference between epi and foil fencing so there's actually FA foil and saber are the three different uh three different disciplines in saber or three different disciplines in fencing. And I like to describe it, you know, sort of using an analogy in that sometimes people are familiar with. Um so it's kind of like the difference between the backstroke and the crawl and you know the uh you know and and breaststroke or whatever, they're all swimming but the mechanics of them are a little bit different and the rules are a little bit different. It's a little bit more than that because fencing has that back and forth interrelated combat issue going on. Right. So you've got like who's attacking and what's doing and 
where this is negotiating. And so um, they're all athletes. They're all fencers. They all work hard. So that's great. Sometimes they're going to approach a problem a little bit differently uh, just because of the rules of the three weapons are a little bit different. Um, target area is going to be different. Mechanics of making the hitter going to be a little bit different. And they tend to have slightly different personalities associated with them. And again, this is a gross, gross oversimplification. Um, but the the um, sort of the traditional way that you view, you know, uh, epe fencers is they're kind of calm and placid. And then the saber fencers are very loud and excitable. And foil fencers tend to be um, sort of a mix of the two. Um, that's the stereotype. It doesn't necessarily hold place, um, but there's some, there is some valid, some validity to that stereotype. Uh, I find it a lot of fun getting to work with all three weapons. Uh, I find it a lot of fun trying to apply ideas from one weapon to the other. That's something that I think I do pretty well. Um, it's when the, I think differentiates my coaching style and my coaching philosophy from a lot of other people is really trying to bring these ideas from one weapon to the other and, and sort of bring everything together. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you built for Wagner College Fencing? Um, it's pretty simple, actually. Basically, it's be accountable to each other, take care of your responsibilities, and embrace a, a culture and, and embrace a process of, of always getting better. Um, and this was something that last year when I started here, I I did a little exercise um, that was based upon some work I was exposed to from the former national U.S. national head coach for foil and former U.S. national uh, uh, coach for uh, foil in Canada. Uh, uh, it was Mike Pedersen, and he was explaining to us some and when I went to a professional development seminar last year. He was showing us some work that he did in culture building with the U.S. with the Canadian women's foil team, and I was looking at it. And I was like, "That's fantastic! I'm going to do that." And what it started with was taking the the ideas of, of the athletes themselves. So, how do you describe yourself? How do you describe your team? How do you want to be described? How do others describe you? How do you want others to describe you? Um, what are what do we want to look like on campus? What do we want our reputation to be like outside of campus in the rest of the fencing community? And sort of taking all those ideas together and saying, okay, so how can we, what do we need to do to develop those ideas? And really it came down to those three things. Basically be accountable to each other, take care of your responsibilities and embrace a process of, continuous improvement and always getting better. Um, that's really where it starts with those three things. Um, and what we found is that if you really embrace those ideas and you really go for it, the competition part's easy because you're always getting better and you're always doing what you need to be doing. So where are some of the teams in your conference that you compete against each week? So uh, fencing is not actually a conference sport. Um, at least we aren't. Uh, there's only two conferences in fencing, the Ivy League and the ACC. And even those conferences, even the schools in those conferences, fence everybody else. So, you know, over the course of the year, we fenced really high level schools, Princeton, Columbia, uh, you know, two of the two of the top schools in the country. Uh, we went against also Johns Hopkins. Uh, we uh, Boston College, Yale. Har uh, we didn't we didn't fence Harvard this year. Brown. Um, so those were, those were some, you know, some of the Ivies, some of the big schools, uh, as well as Sacred Heart, uh, Long Island University, uh, Farley Dickinson, um, what else we fenced? Duke, uh, we went up against, um, Ohio State, uh, Penn State, we fenced Drew, uh, Stevens, we did... I'm going to forget some of these things. Uh, Harvard, it's been a long season. Uh, Haverford, um, Yeshiva, broad range of schools all the way across. Everything from really, really high to they're kind of struggling at the beginning. Wagner's kind of, you know, on the low end. Um, we're not 
one of the great schools yet, um, uh, working to get there. Uh, got a lot of, a lot of work to do ahead of us. And obviously that starts with a good recruiting class, um, and then culture building from there. We had a good recruiting class. We did good culture building this year. We had results that paid off and we're looking to expand that in the future. Um, we're actually, because of our results we had this year, we've actually been invited to a couple of more prestigious meets for next year, which is great. So we're looking at doing that. We're going to get some meets in against, uh, we're going to get a meeting against St. John's, which is a really strong program. Trying to get a uh, meet against UNC, a great strong program. Um, and then meeting against Penn State. So again, building that capacity going forward, always challenging ourselves, always looking to improve. It starts, it's a program level too, not just an individual level. What is that experience like getting to compete against some of those big name programs like Princeton, Harvard, UNC, and Duke? It's great. It's fantastic. Um, first of all, I want to give my colleagues at those schools a big shout out and a big thank you because they didn't have to fence us. But they realized that allowing us to go to compete against them helps the whole program, helps helps the, the community at large. And, you know, we pulled off a couple of individual wins and in some of those things. And it was great, like having the opportunity to, so Columbia came to our home meet this year. We had Columbia and Lafayette, forgot to mention Lafayette, uh, Drew um, and Vassar. Again, forgot to mention Vassar. All at our home meet and getting to fence Columbia on our home turf. That was fantastic. I mean, you know, the stands were, stands were rocking. We had a great time. Um, they came in and trounced us as would be expected from the number two program in the country or number three program in the country. I think this was year, this, this year they were number three. Um, but it was great just having that energy, that excitement, getting to test ourselves against that higher, highest level of competition was what fantastic. That, what is that home game atmosphere like when teams like Princeton and Yale and UNC comes to your home facility? So fencing meets are a little interesting and a little different from a lot of a lot of sports. Uh, the way the scoring works is sometimes a little hard to follow. Um, it's difficult to know who's up, who's down. One of the things we did this year when we we hosted our meet was I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make sure that there was a lot of attention paid to the mechanics of the meet so that spectators could easily follow. Um, and so there were scoreboards with the aggregate totals up and you could see that. Um, that was really fantastic. There was a, I made sure we sent out lots of invitations to the community, the fencing community I said, Hey, we got this great meet going on um, here on Staten Island. And there's, you know, fencing clubs in Staten Island and high school programs on Staten Island. I sent the invitations to them. People came. Um, our, our, our student athletes got the word out to the rest of the, uh, rest of the campus and tried to get some of their friends to do. It was a lot of fun. Um, really rocking. Actually, the, the highlight of the day was at the very end, last, last, um, meet, we weren't fencing Columbia, we were fencing, we were fencing Drew and Drew's a program that's kind of on our level. Um, we go back and we went back and forth with them a couple of times and it came down to the very, very end, like the very, very end. Uh, last couple of bouts, we were behind and we had to win. And so, you know, kids went up in the stands and told everybody like, we're well, here, we go. We're going to be, we're going to be cheering and making noise. Everybody's around us. Um, and we won last couple of meet, last couple of bouts. And it was exciting. It was fantastic. That feeling of everybody digging in, everybody rooting for each other, all the team camaraderie kind of paid off and crystallized all in that one moment, not just the victory. And I don't want to emphasize because the victory is cool. And I don't want to emphasize overemphasize that, but it was the way everybody came together and was cheering for each other. That was the best part. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes? And as a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes? Um, well, I, I, I say this over and over again. I get asked this. I was on a, a panel with USA fencing a couple of a couple months ago academics is first it's it's student athlete for a reason right it, it's in that order it's not athlete student it's student athlete i give the same advice to anybody wanting to to fence in college or be in any college sport 
pay attention to your academics. You got to be a good student. You got to know what you want to do. Well, maybe not know what you want to do, but you got to be able to perform in the classroom as well as on the playing field. That's very important. Um, past that, I'm looking for people that have the ability to continue growing and getting better. I'm not necessarily looking for athletes that have peaked at me when they come to me. I want athletes that are continuing to improve their first year, their second year, their third year, their fourth year, constantly getting better the whole time they're here. That's really what I'm looking for on a performance schedule. And then do you have the capacity for hard work? Can you do time management? People like being around you. We spend a lot of time together. Don't want people who are going to come in and, you know, and inter interfere with that mess, right? Um, we want people that are going to be positive contributors and and also make everybody around them better. And there's a specific thing what I mean by that. So in a dual meet, on your squad, you're going to fence maybe three bouts unless there's a substitution, in which case you only might fence two or my fence one. Um, so that's the maximum number of points that you can personally contribute is three of a, of a total of maximum of 27. It's the number, total number of bouts in a dual meet, us versus another school. And if you can only contribute three, well, yes, individual performance is important. But if you're the type of person who can help your teammates go from one and two to two and one or two and one to three and oh, then you're really valuable to me because it's not just your own results. You're making people around you better. And if everybody in our team goes two and one, we get a guaranteed win. So that's what it comes down to. Of course, what is it like getting to see those freshmen put on that uniform for the first time versus the seniors putting on that Wagner uniform for the last time? Um, well, it's definitely different. That's for sure. So we have no seniors this year. Didn't you know, we, but I did graduate, uh, several last year. Um, I'd only been around for one year, so they were excited to have me, but, and they definitely accepted me and, you know, called me coach and gave me that respect. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of great emotions around that. Um, it wasn't necessarily my place and it, I didn't necessarily want to intrude upon that. Uh, but there was definitely some of them were going to go on and continue fencing. Others weren't. That was it. This was the end of their career. Um, and so they kind of knew that on the last meet. And there was, you know, some, when we went to regionals, they were like, and this is the last time I'm going to get a fence. Um, it's like, well, yeah, unless you choose to do it as an adult. And that's always possible. It's like one of the great things about fencing is it's a lifelong sport. But it's the last time they were going to be at Wagner, fencing in the Wagner colors. Um and that was that was definitely interesting seeing their reactions to that and and seeing how they did it. Some of them, there was definitely emotions involved in that. Few more emotions that were at our home week because we had senior day that day. Um, so again, that that sort of that sort of different experience. And then this year, though, with all of the freshmen coming in, I mean, like I said, we had a massive freshman freshman class this year. All the new ones we needed for the women's team, plus all of the the first years now for the men's team. And it was really cool. Like, you know, I had spent a lot of time preparing them. Um, I had spent a lot of time, you know, talking to them individually and in groups of what it's going to mean. And, you know, when we had that first practice and everybody put on their stuff and, you know, put on the socks and then the mask that we painted green, you know, because that's our thing. It's a green mask. They were like, "Okay, I'm here, Coach. I'm I'm buying in. I'm ready to ready to do this." So yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was cool. What have been some of the things that you've been able to accomplish so far with the Wagner fencing program for the men for the men's and the women's side? Um, we had some really interesting accomplishments this year. Uh, so one of our coolest was at our uh, there's so. There's a big meetup in Boston that we go to. That's the, it's called the Northeast Fencing Conference. It's sort of a 
it's not really a conference. It's a made up conference. A bunch of schools get together and say, hey, we're going to have a meet on this big day and we're always going to be here. Same schools are going to be over. Um, and my men's epi squad went undefeated that day, which was amazing. Nobody expected it. I knew we recruited a good men's epi team. And like at the beginning of the year, I was like, yeah, these guys are good and they're good at working together. And we'd had some interesting preliminaries about that. And when they went undefeated and they beat Boston and they beat MIT and they beat Brown, right? It was like, oh, wow, they're good. They're really good as a unit and they work really, really, really well together. So that was a great accomplishment. Um, I'm really proud of the fact that we had a winning season on the women's side across the board both last year and this year. That was a great accomplishment. Great college for us. Um, qualified more people to regionals this year than have ever been done in the history of the program. And then, obviously, you can't not talk about the amazing result that uh, my freshman Flavio had at NCAA Championships. First of all, the fact that he qualified was amazing. Flavio's a great fencer. Um what makes him truly fantastic is the fact that he's someone who's committed to making people around him better. And again, that ties back into that whole thing. And what makes a great team is makes individuals willing to help people and willing to help make the folks around them even better. And Flavio really bought into that this year. And as a result, he himself was better. And he took the time, was always present in lift, always present in the, in the in the um in the training facility did a lot you know great lessons so on and so forth and he had an amazing result at ncaa he's 13th in the country against saber that's incredible for a first year program i don't think anyone's ever had that kind of result it's very very excited about it what are some of your future plans for the wagner fencing program moving forward um well first of all build on the success of this year We'd like to have not just one qualifier at NCAAs next year. Our target's three. I think we can do that. Any more than that would be awesome. Um, we're going to increase the strength of the meets that we go to in the regular season. So that's that's on the board table already. Um, we still have – we have a great recruiting class coming in. Still looking to fill a couple more spots on that. Still trying to get, get a couple of the I's dotted and T's crossed in a couple of places. I still have a couple of spots that I could, you know, make some room for. Um, but again, grow the program in in every way that means. Not just in numbers, not just in results, but in culture. Making, again, really cementing that idea of the culture here, the great culture we've, we've started to build. Make it even better. Make it even stronger really have a great reputation we have a we have a great reputation among the other schools that we fence of wagner is a team that supports each other and that's awesome like i had a recruit come up to me um this year uh she messaged us she said i saw your team fencing at regionals and we you know we came to watch you fencing at regionals and when i saw how your fencers support each other i said to myself that's a team i want to be part of to me, I can't ask for a better result. Like that right there encompasses everything. So I want more of that to happen. I want other people to see us and say, yes, I want to come to Wagner and I want to fence at Wagner because of the great culture there. What advice would you have those incoming freshmen entering their first year of college fencing? Um, Hit the gym before you get here. <laughs> Right. If you spend some time in over the summer and the end of your senior year getting yourself really physical fit, physically fit, it's going to make September a lot less painful. <laughs> you know, that's really important. Um, and then obviously don't, you know, don't slack on the academics. Make sure you finish all those kind of things. Good. Um, understand that college fencing is different. It's a different environment. And it's a, it, the mechanics of it are very different from any other type of fencing you've ever done in the past. The team system that we have, the dual meet system that we have does take time to getting used to. Um, don't expect that you're going to be able to knock the ball out of the park right away because it is different. 
What advice would you give those college fencers out there looking to compete on the national team for Team USA or Canada and one day make the Olympics? I'm not sure I'm necessarily the best, best qual most qualified person to ask that question. Um, I've never coached an Olympian. Um, I have seen many of them perform, and I'll say what what I have seen them all, and I know a couple of them, what they all do have in common is they all work really hard. And they're all really focused. And that's that's something special to see when you when you see one of the offenser of that quality and that caliber working towards what they're trying to achieve. It's pretty cool. What advice would you have those head coaches looking to build their own fencing program? Like in the NCAA? Mm -hmm. um, it's very different from club coaching. We're coaching in, coaching in a club. There is a lot more paper. Well, not necessarily. There's a lot of paperwork involved in owning your own club. It's a different type of paperwork. So everything that I used to do not fencing that was involved in running the club, somebody else takes care of that here. So insurance and, you know, lease negotiations of one sort or another and social media of everything in that nature. Somebody else takes care of that here on campus. However, there's a completely other different set of things and responsibilities that I have to take care of as a head coach and a program administrator. So it's budgeting, it's travel arrangements, it's interpersonal relationships on the team, it's scheduling, it's meet responsibilities, um, administrative responsibilities, working on a campus, uh, being part of the campus culture, being part of the campus life. Those are all things that don't occur outside NCAA fencing. And they're a big part of the job. So that major piece of advice I boils down to basically, it's not just about the weapon. In fact, the weapon stuff is pretty small in the list of things you got to do. You got to do that, but you also got to do this massive trove of administrative tasks that, you, that they got to take care of. What advice is, would you give college head coaches looking to bring in a fencing program, whether it's already have a men's program and bringing in a women's or vice versa, women's and bringing in a men's program? So there's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no program that just have men. There's a number of programs that have women. Um, and it's an interesting question. People have talked to me about it and asked me. And I said, how did you do it? I asked. Um, like anything else in in life, a lot of times there's a lot of bureaucratic inertia. Um, and this is the way we've always done it. And I think people are afraid to ask sometimes. Sometimes they can't. Like there's some schools that only have women's program because – they're only a women's school, <laughs> so, right? You know, so you're not going to add a men's program to that. But there are some other programs where, yeah, you know, ask, see what you can do. Is there a way for this to, to go on? Um, I think even more than that are the opportunities outside uh, existing programs to add. And I know the the folks over at USA Fencing and the folks in the the coaches association have been working very hard on those fronts trying to bring new programs into the field, new programs into the fold, trying to get build the capacity in that way, that too. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Wagner Fencing Program app? Uh, so our our Wagner Instagram page is a good place to start. So Wagner Fencing. Um, you can go there, follow our stuff. On Instagram, I'm Sierra Saber, S-I-E-R-R-A-S-A-B-R-E. Um, that's the best place, best place to find me. Post some interesting content from here and there. Um, and then I'm on Facebook, David Sierra Fencing. You'll find me. Uh, and then there's also a Wagner Fencing page. Find us both those places there too. Thank you again, Coach David Sierra, for your interview and best luck in your future with Wagner College as the fencing head coach. Thanks very much for the opportunity to have the conversation. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach David Sierra, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.